Welcome back. So today I want to do a galaxy. The other day I was working on a notebook cover. I'm creating my own little journals and I was working on this notebook cover and I made this and I thought I'd share with you how I did it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to wet the paper a little bit here and I'm going to take some purples. Now what you can do is actually look at a picture. Look at the NASA pictures and just to get some inspiration. You don't want to be too uniform. Sometimes I, I, one of the things that I have trouble with is that I get too, um, I make too many straight lines. I'm actually taking a combination of uh, Windsor and Newton, but also these, uh, I think they're called Senlier, yeah, Senlier uh, watercolors. I actually got a pack of five for 15, uh, 15 bucks. So that was on special here at my local craft store. I'm working kind of fast. But I like doing that because I find that if I let the colors dry too much, they don't blend as well. There's a way to fix it actually, and I'll show you that in a minute. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my towel and just kind of dab it along to kind of lift off some of the, the water, and I'm cleaning my brush. And then just throwing some and the reason why I'm doing that is just to kind of bring out some of the the white from the paper and I'm gonna bring in some more this really pretty uh, it's like a turquoise aqua color right now I'm not adding black because I find that when you add black, um, I did add a little bit, it was like Payne's gray, but I find that when you add uh, black too soon, it just kind of gets just muddy. I am going to let this dry just a little bit. And I'm going to add just a little bit of Payne's gray here. This is the Senlier, I hope I'm saying that correctly. You can see this isn't getting ugly or muddy. It's actually blending in really pretty here. And that's going to bring in the dark in our galaxy. I don't know if you can tell right here, uh, you can kind of see the purple behind it and it's not really blending very well. And that's kind of what I was talking about earlier. If you wait too much and it dries it doesn't blend as well so I just go back and add when it's wet that color that I want to that I want to pop again I just put a little bit of water down before putting in my Payne's gray and this is where uh, you can let it dry or you can keep working with it in the areas that are starting to dry and to get this really pretty uh, pink, it's uh, transparent, but it's the Opera, Opera Rose, and it's from Windsor & Newton. Switching over to this one, it's a smaller, uh, it says two, it's a flat, flatter brush, just to bring in the, the Opera Rose in a little bit more precise manner. And as I'm doing this, I'm trying to also blend with the other color. So you, you kind of have to play around with it and kind of figure out what your taste is when it comes to uh, blending the colors. For some people, um, I think they, they like to do it 
you know, once they let the layers dry, I like to work wet on wet when I'm doing galaxies. Sometimes I just take a little bit of just water itself to help things along, to help them blend, and to get rid of any harsh edges because you, you really don't want to have any, any harsh edges like here. I want to blend that out. This color, this, let's see if I have it here. This one is a cobalt turquoise light and it's from Windsor & Newton and that's how I'm getting this really pretty turquoise color. It took me forever to find these colors because when I was first starting out I, I thought they were all included in the palette and um, one thing to note is that these ones are series four which means that it's higher up in the professional line for Windsor and Newton same as these Senlier colors they're series two and then I have for example uh, this Windsor and Newton common watercolor and it's turquoise series one but it doesn't look anything like that color right there already start to see like right here you're starting to get some really pretty patterns I like leaving if I can little gaps like that that come up naturally from the watercolor itself it's a, I think it's a ultramarine blue from the Senlier line that I'm putting down right now now again you don't have to buy expensive watercolors to do this in fact, for some people this might be a waste of money because I'm using up something that's pretty expensive on a just a quick tutorial. But you can use any student grade watercolors to create this. It's all about the technique that you use and um, how you play around with it. I've seen some beautiful drawings and beautiful watercolor works um, using the most simple basic supplies. Here I'm just dabbing it with just water. That's all. Just water. So I want to pop this purple up a little bit more as it's drying. And I'm also trying to use more like dabbing motions rather than strokes. So I'm not doing this. I'm trying to avoid that. I'm getting my brush wet and just dabbing it. Just dab it. And that also kind of creates really pretty patterns when you do that. And as you can see, as it's blending in with the other colors, you're getting different uh, tones and different mixtures of the same color. And you can do that on your palette. I like for it to just happen organically in my, in my piece of artwork or in the galaxy specifically. I don't always do this in other pieces, but I like doing it here because I think it just, it just looks better to have something a little bit more pure and then have it just kind of mix on its own. So watercolors are transparent, so they're going to layer. So as I'm doing this part, I'm wiping down the brush a little bit more because there's quite a bit of water still over here. And we're just going to start increasing the darker colors. Kind of let it pop. I'm barely touching, just letting it kind of do its own thing. And because it's wet on wet, you can see it spreading. I love when they spread like that. They just mix on their own. If it's not uh, wet, like over here, you can just take a little bit of water and kind of give it some direction with some paint still on your brush. 
and see how it starts to, to blend and then I'm going to clean it and just with the water just start mixing it again. I'm going to take turquoise from the Cotman line and you can see how beautiful and vibrant it is. Very different from this turquoise, even though it's the same line, but it's a different uh, color. The other one's a cobalt. This one is just turquoise. I'm taking just some water. I don't think I'm going to add too much color on this side because I like that it it has that clearness to it. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit more of the lake just to kind of blend it out. I think what makes a galaxy really, really pop is contrast. So you want to have darks and lights. And when you have that, it, it really depicts... Um, what a gal galaxy is, which is, you know, a vast of darkness, um, and then you have these beautiful pieces of color that just come through. Right now I'm taking Payne's Gray from Senlang, but I am going to start picking up a little bit of a darker color to help this get a little bit more contrast and it's going to be from the half pants side and it's lamp black and see how it's very very dark it's beautiful black so having different uh, tones of black is going to give your galaxy dimension You know, you don't have to create this huge masterpiece. Um, you know, create because it's fun, because it's something that you enjoy. You know, I feel really calm and at peace when I do this, and that's why I do it. It helps, you know, manage stress and really it's more about the process for me. Um, and it helps me, you know, kind of let go and just enjoy myself. I know that a lot of people think, oh, I'm not an artist. I can't do that. But you absolutely can um, with some practice and with some confidence in yourself. And so what, you know, if it doesn't look like mine or it doesn't look like that person that you admire, just enjoy yourself as you're doing it. biggest lesson that you can learn is when you're creating create for yourself even if you're doing it for professional purposes you're not going to take commissions that that you're not happy with uh, taking you know you take the ones that really inspire you and that you feel really connected to so I'm starting to feel pretty good about this I'm just gonna add a little bit more more black here. I'm going to let this dry and then when I come back we're going to add our stars. Okay, so now that our galaxy is a little bit more dry, we are going to use this, I think is the best uh, white to do the stars background. It's uh, Copic Opaque White. It goes a long way. Uh, sometimes it dries up, but if you add just a little bit of water inside, it actually reactivates because it's uh, water soluble. Um, one thing that I like to do is keep the rim clean, uh, which obviously uh, hasn't happened lately, but to keep it as clean as possible because when you do that, it tines it up better and it keeps the air out and it keeps it from drying. So just a little tip there. So I'm just going to take some of that and I'm actually going to clean my water. 
Okay, so I'm just going to take just a little bit of this. See, it doesn't take much. And I'm going to add a little bit of water to it. If you leave some on your palette, you can reactivate it with water, but it does get really crumbly, so just be aware of that. So I'm going to take the brush, and then what I'm going to do is first make sure that your area of where you're working is covered in something because you're going to splatter around. So you can do it like this. The tighter you grab it, the tinier the stars are going to be. The looser, the more coverage you're going to get. The more water you add, the bigger the... Uh, the drops are going to be. You have a couple of different options before you start putting on the stars. If you see that it's not dark enough and you want it darker, you can just keep adding layers to it. Just let it dry really well. I would let it dry maybe for like a day or something like that. And then come back to it and add more and it'll get darker. Like you can see here on this one, it's a little bit darker. The blue the, the green cobalt is popping up a lot more. So you can do that also, is just come back and make it, make it darker. You can add stars and then come back to it, but I would be careful because if the white starts to react, it will change the consistency and the colors of your, your paint as it's reactivating. I'll kind of show you here on this test page. See how it's no longer, it's becoming like a pastel-y color. So. I'm going to get a little bit of darker color here. And then if I add the white, it changes it. And there's no coming back from that. So if I keep adding the blue, it's still really, well, <laughs> really muddy. So I would recommend that if you're going to make it dark, just make it dark before you add the stars. Don't, unless it's like, just like a little spot or something. The closer you hold it and tight, it creates these like really pretty clusters. So there you go. So this is one way that you can do your galaxy. It's a wet on wet technique. The only part that's dry is at the end when you add your stars. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you followed along and you try it. So if you do try it, make sure you are following me on Instagram and you tag me in it. I want to see your creations. What color combos did you come up with? Um, what technique did you use? Did you try this? Let me know and tag me. So make sure you hit that like button down below, you share this video, and you subscribe so that you can see more videos. If you have any questions, if you want to see something special, make sure you leave me a comment below. I'll see you for the next time. Bye!